U.S. Agriculture Secretary met Governor Abbott today to announce steps to battle an invasive species that could threaten Texas livestock. It started as one of the strangest ecological experiments ever attempted. Scientists decided to unleash millions of parasitic flies onto colonies of invasive ants. It sounded insane, like a bad science fiction plot, but it wasn't fiction. It was a desperate plan to stop an invasion that was quietly destroying entire ecosystems. No one expected what would happen next, because after 30 years of tracking, documenting, and studying this living battlefield, the results shocked the world and raised new questions about whether humans should ever try to play God with nature. This is the true story of what happens when science turns predator against predator, and nature answers back in ways no one predicted. The war that started it all. The story begins in the early 1900s, when ships carrying cargo from South America accidentally brought an uninvited passenger to the southern United States, the red imported fire ant. Small, aggressive, and relentless, these ants began spreading like wildfire through farmland, forests, and cities. They swarmed animals, destroyed crops, damaged electrical systems, and even attacked humans. In just a few decades, they conquered entire states, from Texas to Florida. Governments spent millions trying to wipe them out. Pesticides, traps, and baits all failed. The ants just adapted, built deeper nests, and multiplied faster than anyone could stop them. Something had to be done. And that's when scientists proposed a radical idea. Fight fire with flies. Enter the parasitic assassin. In the 1990s, entomologists discovered that in the ants' native homeland of South America, their numbers were naturally kept in check by a horrifying little creature, the forid fly. This fly, barely larger than a grain of sand, had evolved a gruesome relationship with ants. It didn't just attack them, it controlled them. The forid fly would hover above an ant, dart in, and inject an egg into the ant's body. The egg would hatch inside, and the larva would slowly eat the ant from the inside out, eventually crawling into its head and consuming the brain. Within days, the ant's head would literally fall off. The larva would then transform into a new fly inside the hollowed skull and emerge, ready to continue the cycle. It was nature's own assassin, silent, merciless, and terrifyingly efficient. So scientists thought, if this fly could keep ant populations stable in South America, maybe it could do the same in the United States. But no one knew what would happen once millions of them were set free. The Great Fly Drop. Starting in the late 1990s, researchers began releasing forid flies across the southern U.S. in Texas, Louisiana, and Florida. They didn't just drop a few hundred, they dropped millions. Entire research programs were devoted to breeding, tracking, and releasing them. For decades, scientists watched and waited, expecting to see a massive collapse in the fire ant population. But that's not what happened. The ants didn't vanish. They didn't even decline dramatically. Something much stranger occurred, something that challenged everything scientists thought they knew about predator-prey balance. The ants fought back. At first, it looked like the flies were winning. In test zones, ants stopped coming out during the day. Worker ants hid deeper underground, leaving food uncollected. The colonies began to shrink, but then the fire ants started changing their behavior. Within just a few years, scientists noticed that ants were developing new patterns, guarding their nests in shifts, sending decoy workers to distract flies, and even altering their movement speed to make themselves harder targets. Some ants began building new kinds of mounds, smaller, with tighter entrances, impossible for the flies to penetrate. In short, the ants were learning. The flies had changed the ants' entire social structure, not by killing them, but by forcing them to evolve. The psychological warfare. What shocked scientists most wasn't the death toll, it was the fear. Even when the flies weren't around, the ants behaved as if they were. Researchers found that just the sound or shadow of a forward fly was enough to send thousands of ants scattering for cover. 
the ants developed what experts called behavioral suppression. They'd rather starve than risk being decapitated. The flies had become a weapon of psychological warfare. Entire colonies were paralyzed by the mere presence of their predator. For the first time in recorded ecology, scientists had discovered a parasite that didn't need to kill its prey to dominate it. It just needed to be remembered. The ecosystem shifts. Over the years, something unexpected began happening across the American South. As fire ants became more cautious and less dominant, native ant species, long driven to the edge of extinction, began returning. The soil started recovering. Birds and reptiles that fed on those native ants started coming back too. It wasn't a total victory. Fire ants still existed, but they were no longer invincible. Instead, balance had begun to return. The flies hadn't wiped out the ants. They'd tamed them. It was as if nature had found its own form of justice. But this strange balance came at a cost. When nature fights back, over the decades, scientists began to notice a darker side to the experiment. In some regions, the flies started targeting native ants, species that weren't meant to be part of the war. Entire local populations began vanishing mysteriously. Even more unsettling, the forward flies themselves started to evolve. They developed new behaviors, new attack strategies, and new timing, striking at night or during cooler weather when ants weren't expecting them. Nature wasn't following human rules anymore. One biologist described it best, we opened a door we can't close, because once a predator is released, it doesn't always stay loyal to the plan. 30 years later, the results, no one predicted. Now, three decades after the first fly releases, the results are staggering. Fire ants still exist, but their population is far more fragmented and less aggressive. They've become quieter, less dominant, and, strangely, more cooperative with other species. The forid flies, on the other hand, have spread further than scientists expected. They now occupy massive ranges, quietly shaping ant behavior across continents. What's even more remarkable is that scientists discovered that the fly's presence actually slowed ant reproduction rates, not through killing, but through chronic stress. The ant's entire biology had been altered by fear. Generations born under threat had smaller colonies, weaker queens, and shorter lifespans. It wasn't extinction, it was evolution, forced, rapid, and irreversible. And this made experts realize something deeply unsettling. By trying to control one species, humans had triggered an evolutionary arms race that could keep reshaping ecosystems for centuries. The Moral Dilemma At first, the experiment was hailed as a triumph, proof that biological control could work. But now, decades later, scientists are asking a different question. Was it right? Because behind the success lay an uncomfortable truth. Millions of tiny creatures had been weaponized, and nature itself had been manipulated on a planetary scale. If this could happen with ants and flies, what happens when we try it with larger species or even ecosystems that sustain human life? What if balance comes at a price we can't yet measure? Some researchers began calling it ecological karma, the idea that every intervention, no matter how well-intentioned, carries hidden consequences. And in this case, the consequence wasn't destruction. It was transformation. Lessons from the War of the Insects The fire ant experiment didn't end with total victory, but it revealed something extraordinary about the natural world. It showed that ecosystems are not static. They think, they adapt, they respond. The ants didn't just fight back, they changed. It also proved that intelligence doesn't belong only to humans. Even the smallest creatures on Earth can evolve strategies, anticipate threats, and alter their behavior in ways we once thought impossible. And it forced scientists to confront a humbling truth. Sometimes, nature doesn't need our solutions. It needs us to understand her limits. The unseen future today, as climate change accelerates and invasive species spread faster than ever, some experts are once again turning to biological warfare as a solution, releasing predators, parasites, 
and even genetically modified insects into ecosystems. But the lessons from the fire ant war remain a haunting warning. Because when you interfere with nature's ancient balance, you don't just change the species you target, you change everything around it. The forid flies proved that even a microscopic creature can alter the fate of entire landscapes, not through destruction, but through fear. And as the decades pass, scientists continue to find new patterns, new behaviors, and new mysteries that no one could have predicted when the first flies were dropped. It's as if the experiment is still unfolding, a living reminder that nature never forgets. The final twist. There's one final mystery that continues to baffle experts. In areas where both the ants and the flies have coexisted the longest, researchers have noticed an eerie phenomenon, colonies that seem to accept the flies' presence. The ants no longer panic. They move slower, more organized, almost synchronized with the rhythms of the flies themselves. It's as if predator and prey have reached a silent agreement, an unspoken balance, born from decades of war. Some scientists believe we're witnessing the beginning of a new evolutionary partnership where survival no longer depends on domination, but on coexistence. And that, perhaps, is nature's greatest lesson of all. They dropped millions of flies on ants. And what happened next wasn't chaos or extinction. It was evolution in motion, a terrifying, beautiful reminder that when humans meddle with nature, we may think we're in control. But in the end, nature always writes the final chapter. Because she doesn't play by our rules, she writes her own.